Tracy Wilson Rossman here again, coming to you uh, this time from my home office, not downstairs in my uh, dining room with 15 minutes with, and I'm really excited. I have a really special guest. Um, Leslie Richards is the general manager of SEPTA. Um, and, you know, I don't think that most people will think that SEPTA has any technology been. Um, but we're going to disprove that today. Um, and, you know, SEPTA is a very important part of our, of our region. But, um, you know, I would, I would love for Leslie just to introduce herself, maybe tell a little bit about your journey to, to where you, you know, how you got to where you are today. And then we'll, we'll start with some questions. Sure. Well, thanks for having me, Tracy. Um, we are very much a, a data-driven and a technology company here. Uh, my beginning, which I think might be interesting uh, to some of uh, some of uh, the viewers here, is that um, I started off with uh, you know a computer bent. I was a spatial analysis and uh, geographic information system. Um, an analyst for the EPA. That's how I started and got involved in transportation doing uh, air quality modeling and emissions uh, data and, uh, and, and working uh, with that uh, with, with our EPA. And from there, then got interested in transportation, working for an environmental engineering firm, working for a civil engineering firm. Uh, I also um, I got interested in my community uh, I was a stay-at-home mom for eight years, and while I was a stay-at-home mom, uh, helped run our township days. I uh, then was asked to join our park and rec board, uh, our planning commission, and uh, then as I went back to work, was also asked to run for office, something that I had never anticipated in doing. I ran for township supervisor in White Marsh Township. And uh, after um, serving as the chair of that board of supervisors, I, re I realized that all of the things I truly care about that impacts uh, our everyday lives, um, many of those decisions are made uh, at that township uh, board of supervisors level. And I really enjoyed being active in my community in that way. So while I was working for the engineering firms, I started pursuing um, that type of work uh, in going in front of the county commissioners. Uh, I realized that I may have um, uh, a perspective to bring there that uh, wasn't uh, what, what wasn't there at the time. And so I put my name uh, into that race as well in Montgomery County and was thrilled uh, when uh, we won that race. And I got to get really involved in um, running the counties, particularly on the planning, uh, the economic developments and, um, and um, you know, the transportation issues. Uh, that's where I met uh, Tom Wolf, who was working as a businessman out of York County at the time, and uh, he runs for governor. Uh, we share uh, our, our governing um, approach as well as, um, you know, my passion for transportation and what uh, the Commonwealth could be and uh, was uh, an offered uh, to help him in any way I can. And of course was thrilled uh, to serve as his secretary of transportation for five years. And now I am uh, the general manager, the 11th general manager of SEPTA. Uh, everything that I do, uh, a lot of it, um, it's always based um, in data-driven decisions. Uh, it's a very big part of transportation. Obviously, it's a big part of transit here at uh, SEPTA. And I am thrilled uh, to be the general manager. I started in January of 2020, obviously, with uh, um, some different goals and, uh, and what I thought the first year would be. Uh, we have been thrown a few curves, uh, to say the least, uh, but really thrilled to be here uh, making the impact uh, that we are and uh, helping run this essential service that's allowing all of us to stay as safe and healthy as possible while uh, we deal with the pandemic together. So let's talk about um, pre-COVID um, and the use of data. So, um, you know, we talk a lot about data at Chariot. We are, we're helping to build those the, the pipelines, uh, the, the way to get the data out. But talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, how you're getting your data, 
uh, what you're looking for and how you're using it. Sure. So we use data all the time here. Uh, obviously, real-time information uh, for our scheduling uh, on our platforms and how um, we help people get around is, is huge. Uh, we have a SEPTA app. Um, we have uh, a website that uh, we put up information. And uh, so getting that information to our customers uh, is, is obviously a big way of how we can best serve um, our riders. Uh, we're always looking for ways to improve it. In fact, we're modernizing right now and getting more information out. And so uh, that continues to be an area uh, that we're working on. Uh, I'm a thorough believer in better data is better, it makes better decisions. Uh, so we just recently uh, purchased APCs and APCs are automatic passenger counters. And that's for all of our transit vehicles. And that means that we soon will have real time information on uh, not just the location of our vehicles, but also the loads of those vehicles um, uh, in transit that, that translates into how many people are on each vehicle, which also allows us to really hone uh, our schedules to make sure that we are serving and meeting the needs of as many customers and seeing what their travel patterns are throughout the day and so that we can tweak and make adjustments again to, to better serve um, our customers. Uh, this also allows us to better communicate uh, to our riders right now, you know, during COVID, uh, they can make better informed decisions where social distancing is so important. So getting that data out is really, really important. Uh, communications um, on service delays and updates, uh, our alert management system, uh, that's our communication. We rely on social media a lot. We've um, obviously our Twitter our, our um, website, uh, we have a microsite that is dedicated just to COVID information. And uh, we also have um, how our data gets out uh, to, our, to our stations as well. And that can be through announcements and they can get triggered uh, to make sure it goes through our control center and how it gets out and how it gets uh, um, distributed uh, throughout our system is also a pretty complex um, uh, a pattern in, in that we have to follow. Uh, we also have all of our, dis our dispatch and our centralized traffic control systems. Um, I mentioned, I just mentioned a control center, but they're always monitoring, looking at our, you know, bi-directional train movements. Uh, they're making sure that um, train dispatchers are operating safely. Uh, and uh, we're making sure that uh, train traffic controls, which, you know, includes our switching, our signal control, our headway management, all of that uh, is, is, is data driven and, and helps keep all of us you know, safe. Um, to continue on safety and security, um, we have an app called SEPTA Transit Watch that anybody can download. And this helps uh, people report if they see anything that's making them feel unsafe or if they see any what they feel might be a security issue. Um, or, or possibly, you know, um, any type of criminal activity, they can get on the app and they can report it without um, making a scene. And that way it goes straight to our transit police and our transit police can then respond. And that helps us uh, with our surveillance of the system. And uh, that's been tremendously helpful. We also have video surveillance. Uh, we have cameras on our buses, our trolleys, our trains, our subways so that we can monitor. Um, activities. We have cameras on our stations. Our transit police wear body cameras, and uh, that helps as well. And uh, then we also have safe control and movements of our train uh, traffic. Um, it's called positive train control, PTC, and that allows our trains to brake uh, appropriately and um, really not rely, you know, so, so we can eliminate human error uh, on, on, uh, on our um, system. And so those are just a few of the of the ways uh, that we use. He just rattled off. Um, well, that? He just rattled those off. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's really it's a combination of you know hardware technology as well as software technology. Absolutely. And melding that. Now you talked a little bit. You'd mentioned about modernization, mm -hmm. um, which you know we had we had started to talk about pre-COVID. Um, so if things were headed in the direction, no pun intended there, um, that, you know, we had hoped 2020 would have gone down, what are type, what are some of the modernization things that you were looking to do? Right. Um, 
Well, in some ways, COVID has accelerated um, some of the things that we've done. Okay. I mentioned the APCs, the, the passenger counters, that has always been like a wish list for us to, to be more efficient. And obviously now with social distancing and other um, elements uh, of the pandemic of how we keep everyone safe, uh, that really gave us um, uh, more incentive to move that to the top, you know, the list of priorities uh, that we have. We had always wanted to look at our IT systems and see how we could be more efficient. We always wanted to look to more apps. We want to go to mobile payments. All of those things are still continuing, um, but they're just continuing uh, at a slower pace, some of them, as, uh, as we deal with other funding challenges uh, that we have right now. Um, one thing that I've always been interested in is public outreach, how we interact with our customers. And um, during COVID, it's been an extra challenge where, uh, as you can imagine, we're used to communicating on our radio systems with signage um, in our, on our platforms and in our vehicles. But when our riders aren't there, how do you communicate to them? Right. And so we're trying to reach out you know, with social media, uh, but we're also, we had to run public hearings on our fare restructuring and we had to offer it in multiple languages. Uh, but we were able to do that to a greater extent than we've been able to do before, you know, using technology. And that will continue to be part of SEPTA, even though it became a necessity uh, during the pandemic. Well, that's great. That actually answered the next question I had, which is what are some of the things that you are doing uh, with, you know, because of COVID? And um, it sounds like you've done a lot in a very short period of time. Um, yeah, being nimble, was... uh, you know, certainly you've had to be nimble in, in figuring out how to provide service while dealing with the fact that there's reduced, you know, reduced numbers of riders. No, absolutely. Um, you know, I say it over and over again, look, we are, we're in crisis mode here and we're in a crisis and we don't know the ending. And so that's, uh, you know, that's very difficult. It's not like a snowstorm. It begins and it, right. And then it ends, right? Or flooding event or the type of crises that we're used to dealing with. Right. We wish right now, right? <laughs> right, right. So, uh, you know, obviously, you know, we have to pace ourselves, but it is not, even with our funding challenges and even with all of the challenges that the pandemic has um, has faced us with, it is not a time to stop being innovative. Like we cannot stop thinking about what it is we need to be better than we were before the pandemic. And there's still a lot of opportunities uh, for us to be better, for us to improve, to better serve the, um, the public. We're moving forward with a lot of projects uh, that we had started before the pandemic. And again, we have the overall goal of making our system easier to use, making it more accessible and making it more affordable. And all of those things only get done if we truly utilize uh, technology. It's a great answer, so thank you. Um, we're gonna close this out with, you know, I am, I'll, I'll be very open with everyone here. I am biased. I am a big fan of public transportation. Um, I'm a, you know, I'm a SEPTA user, my family's SEPTA user, users, so we believe in the system. Um, so I'm prefacing that because I'm throwing you a softball right now, which is, you know, talk to us about the importance of a strong public transportation system in a region, not just in Philadelphia proper, but to the region and what it means for our economic recovery. I think one thing the pandemic has highlighted is how transit is truly an essential service. Um, because of transit, essential workers have been able to get to their essential jobs. Um, hospital rooms are being cleaned properly, right? Food is being served um, to the medical staff. Uh, it's, uh, shelves are being stocked, right, in grocery stores. Um, gas stations are, are, are being um, staffed. Things that we are counting on uh, we don't have to worry about them because these essential workers, many of them who earn close to minimum wage, by the way, and have no other options of getting around and or, or, or how they can be mobile, um, are using transit uh, to get to where they need to be. There is no transit agency in the entire country that has stopped working because of the pandemic. In fact, in the world, and transit is a part and a vital part of our economy here, our regional economy. And we are gonna be a big part of the regional recovery. 
Uh, I think people are appreciating us in a way where they truly took us for granted before, as well as to our customers. I think that this pandemic has truly highlighted um, the low income and wage, um, you know, you know, workers who have kept us all um, functioning during this extremely, extremely challenging time. And so I think people understand the need uh, for transit. There are definitely those who are, you know, what we would call transit dependent uh, versus, you know, those who choose to use transit because it's it's a choice to them. But I do want to remind everybody, transit is still the safest way to get around. We are seeing an increase in traffic accidents and pedestrian and cyclist accidents. When you're riding transit, you are 10 times safer than when you're in a vehicle. That's if you're on our subways, buses, um, or on our trolleys. If you're on our regional rail line, you're 18 times safer. I mean, who would not choose a safer way um, to get to where you're going? And as well as being environmentally sensitive, right? You're really truly helping with air quality matters um, as well. And so there's still all of these wonderful benefits uh, to transit. And I truly think um, SEPTA needs to be operating at its full capacity in order for the region to come back and to come back at the pace that it should. Without SEPTA running, uh, employees aren't gonna be able to get um, their workers here uh, in Philadelphia region, as well as in our surrounding counties. And also just to remind everybody, we are a large business with over $2 billion budget. And so we need supplies, we need um, parts, we need um, a lot of um, uh, purchases uh, from Pennsylvania companies. In fact, we do business in 38 of the 67 counties uh, in Pennsylvania. So it's not just our five uh, county region. Uh, we need to buy tracks, we need to get steel, uh, we need to get nuts and bolts and, and supplies. And so we truly keep a lot of businesses, um, you know, uh, working and healthy. And so it's that piece of it as well. And this region itself sends a lot more money to Harrisburg and then Harrisburg distributes it to, uh, to other counties. Uh, we provide 42% of uh, the economic output. It gets sent to Harrisburg. Uh, we're only, uh, you know, about 33% of the population and we're on 5% of the land mass. And so the only way that our economy can function also at that um, optimal level is with transit because, um, you know, the Philadelphia region just cannot function. Uh, people can't get around in single occupancy vehicles to where they need to be. And so uh, obviously I'm a big believer, uh, not only in what we do for the economy, but also in, with diversity and inclusion issues, providing opportunities um, to all neighborhoods that we serve and making sure that uh, everyone can count on us and, and get the opportunities um, that are out there. Well, thank you so much for spending some time. I know that you're busy. Uh, and, um, you know, thank you for the work that you're doing. Sure. Thank you for having me. I always love these conversations. And, uh, you know, I hope to have you back when things are, uh, what I'm terming after times and we can talk about, you know, other, the new tech that you're implementing to make yourself more efficient. I would love it. And I would love that. Uh, I would love to have you come here. We'll, we'll give you a tour. Great. Great. That'd be great. All right. Thanks. Thank you.